Hey listeners, Robert here, writer and producer for the Tunnels Podcast, and welcome to our fifth and final season. This show began five years ago, when the idea first came to me during my morning drive to work. Since then, my life has changed so much. I got married to Shannon, who voices Molly Madison, and together we adopted a beautiful baby girl, Shelby, who just turned four at the time of this uh, being published. I've developed lifelong friendships, and I'm currently surviving a global pandemic. Hopefully it'll stay that way. It's been a hell of a journey, and it's not over yet. Now, this season we're doing something a bit different, so I encourage you to stick around until after the credits, or you just might miss something important. And with that, welcome once again to our final season. This is episode 501, Nightmares. Could freedom be between the lines? Let me tell you a story. Enjoy a life foundation springing up to find. I've done a lot of bad. That every thought will lead to nothing. What? Are we talking possession or something? No matter how hard you try to define the vessel. Take me down to the final decision and the world will break apart today and let's make a plan and the world will break apart burn with me today <gasps> we need to stop I can't keep this up. Is it safe? Come on. Let's hold up here. What happened back there? Uh, we, we left him. We... we didn't have a choice. Oh, fuck you. We just left him there to die. He was already dead. What the hell happened? I don't know. Just saw a bright flash, heard Cade scream, and then we were running. Oh, we, we could have done something. We... We didn't have to leave him. And what about Peter? It was Peter. What? I saw it. That light, that energy, whatever it was, came from Peter. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. Why would Peter do that? He he wouldn't. Then what are we saying? Ezekiel got his fucking wish. He, He played us the entire time. He couldn't do it alone. That's why he got us. He needed us to stop Cinder at least long enough to... Kill him. Yeah. And when he killed Cinder... Armin. Jesus. So what are we saying? Armin is back, but in Peter? Yep. Fuck. How bad is this going to get? I don't know. But we can't go back right now. With that kind of power, we can't handle him on our own. We need help. Uh, Help? Who the hell are we going to get? The sheriff? He's not going to do a damn thing. This is different. He might be willing to... Might be willing to what? Investigate it further? Put someone undercover? Let's face it. We're all we've got. Then... Then if if we're all we've got, what the hell are we going to do? Huh? I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm going to leave. All of this chaos, tunnels collapsing, and people dying? Fuck that. I'm going back to the hospital to check on Tara. Hold up. What is it, Robert? What are you going to say to try to get me to turn around and march back into battle? Nothing. What? She's right. I don't have a plan. I have no clue what to do next. But what I do know is that every part of me, down in my bones, wants to get out of these woods and as far away as possible from Peter, Armin, or whatever the hell he is now. So you're right, Erica. We're all that we've got. We need to stick together. So if you're going to the hospital, we're going to. Okay. And let's get the hell out of here. Fuck. What happened? My arms feel like they're on fire. Kate, is that you? Come on, get up. Time to move. Kate, come on. Cade? Cade! Fuck! Fuck, get up, you son of a bitch! Oh, God. What happened here? You fucked up, Peter. That's what happened. Cade? 
But you're... Dead. Yeah, I know. Hands off my corpse, please. I don't need it anymore, but that doesn't mean you get to play with it either. What happened? You fucked up, Peter. And you fucked up all the way. I don't remember. Which part? The part where you fucked around and let Ezekiel kill Cinder? Or the part where you fucked around and killed me? But I... Come on. Seriously? I'm Kentucky Fried Chicken over there. Extra crispy. No, I I can't have. Cinder, it must have been him. He must have... Seriously, man. Do you really think Cinder could have pulled this off? And besides, look what Ezekiel did to him. No. No, this can't be real. This is some kind of fucking nightmare. Oh, yeah. This is definitely a nightmare. Come on, PD. Think. This all started when they dragged you into the tunnels. The rest of your life was decided that day. No! Then you tell us, Mr. Davis, what do you think is going on? More ghosts. Even better. I don't know. Then if that's the case, allow me to throw out some suggestions. Maybe there was a gas leak and you're hallucinating. Wouldn't be the first time gas leaked into underground tunnels after all. There's just usually nobody in them to be affected, or... Maybe all these years have just been a bad dream, and all of this is a bit of undigested beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, a fragment of an underdone potato. Maybe there is more of gravy than grave to all of this. Or still, maybe it's much, much worse than any of that. Maybe you're dying. Maybe someone walked up behind you and put a bullet in the back of your head. Boy, that would be the biggest kick in the pants, wouldn't it? Maybe your brains are sputtered all over the tunnel wall, and as you shuttle off from this mortal coil, this is your brain's perverted version of this is your life. No, I'm, I'm not dying. Is there a white light? Oh, please, give me all the gory details. Spare not a drop of information. After all, the only thing I remember about the whole procedure was the screaming in pain. None of this is real. Mr. Davis, for over a decade you've been tracking cults that worship gods of fire and darkness. You fought monsters and madmen, and this is where you draw the line between what's real and what's not? This can't be happening. Can't it? Come on, Peter, haven't you always known this was going to happen? Where is me? I didn't know it was my job to keep up with your pet. Stop. We can't afford to stop. We don't know who's following us. I said stop. Robert and his crew ran in the other direction. They are no threat to us. What about Ezekiel? Ezekiel isn't the one we should be worried about. Then who? Didn't you hear it? Hell, couldn't you feel it? That sound? I thought it was... It was power. Absolute power. He has risen. If it's Ariaman, then surely we can go back. Go back? Go back? Do you think we can simply return to him and all will be forgiven? Yes. You've served him loyally for all this time. If you apologize, beg his forgiveness. Beg him? He should beg for my forgiveness. I have stayed true to him. I've only strayed once or twice, but it was merely for the greater good. And to protect myself so I could better serve him. Exactly. He'll see your reasoning. Of course, of course. And yet everything I did, he went behind my back and had Ezekiel working against me this entire time. How dare he? After everything I've done for him, after everything I've sacrificed in his name, can Ezekiel say the same? Can anyone? Everything you did? Everything you sacrificed? What about me? Look at everything I did in the name of your fucking plan. I sacrificed my entire life, 
all in the name of this grand fucking plan of yours. Ever since I was a little girl trying to do right for my big brother, and you told me to wait, to sit on the sidelines and do nothing. And I did. I waited. I waited because you told me that one day all your plans, all your dreams would come true if I was just patient, and I waited. Did you even notice? Did you even care? While you were out there manipulating those women, even that bitch May, to get them to do the things that you weren't man enough to do yourself, where was I? I was doing what you told me to. I was waiting. And when you got arrested and sent to that godforsaken asylum, do you have any idea how hard it was for me to do nothing? To not try to help you? But no, that's not my place. That's not my role, is it, George? No, I had to wait. While you were rotting in that asylum, I was rotting out here, wasting my life away doing nothing, hiding in plain sight, getting married to some insipid moron to keep my cover. Couldn't let anyone know who I am, who I really was. Couldn't tell anyone about my brother and his grand plans. (laughs) So don't talk to me about sacrifice, George. You were always my greatest student. I see that now. (laughs) Do you think I can't tell when I'm being manipulated? Hell, I've seen you do it enough times. Doesn't work on me, Georgie boy. Never did. Never needed to either because I didn't need convincing. I believed in you. I believed in your plan. Should I be worried, baby sister? Oh, don't you worry. If I planned on turning on you, you would never see it coming. And what of May? Did she see it coming? What? Don't play coy with me. What did you do to her? I told you it wasn't my job to... Come now, sister. Let's lay everything out on the table, hmm? No sense in keeping things secret now. Did you trip her as you ran? Push her towards Cinder's corpse just to see what happened. Kick her before she had the chance to make it to her feet. Fine. I gutted her with my knife and left her for dead. I hope Ariman makes her suffer for her insolence. (laughs) What's so funny? You fool. Why do you think I chose May? Out of everyone I could have used, why do you think I chose her specifically? Even above you to a certain degree, it was her resourcefulness. She knows how to get herself out of a bad situation because she's been doing it all her life. If you left her alive, she's going to use that treachery to convince Ahriman to join with him, whether she actually believes in what his plans are or not. Let her try. Try? (laughs) Oh, sister, she is one of the most vindictive and vengeful people I have ever met, even more so than myself. She will wait in the tall grass, kill us both before we even know she's there. I honestly can't tell if you're scared of her or in love with her. Neither. I just know that your act of selfishness has made what we will have to do... Much, much harder. And what do we have to do? Little sister, I think it's time we had a little visit back to a place I never wanted to go back to. And where might that be? We need to return to Spalding Sanitarium. I gotta snap out of this. Peter, there's no snapping out of this. You knew Ezekiel would betray everyone. You've known for years, but you chose to do nothing about him. No! There's no way in hell I could have seen this coming. You sent me to spy on him. Every time he stabbed someone in the back, I told you about it. How could you not have known? Especially after I died. It was an accident. And you believed him? I can't take this. I have to be losing my fucking mind. Oh, I don't recommend that. 
Someone might just come along and lock you up. May? <laughs> nope. I'm sorry, dearie. That's the wrong answer, but you were very close. Would you like to try again? No, it can't be. Your suspension of disbelief ends at little old me? I don't know if I should feel honored or offended. Get out of my head! Oh, would that I could, Peter. I've lived in torment ever since I set myself on fire in the asylum. You're just another fresh hell for me. Get out of my head! <sighs> are they gone? For now. Who are you? You know who I am. No, it can't be. It can be. I have waited a thousand lifetimes for this moment, Peter. We stopped you. You tried. It was a valiant effort, impressive even. But you only succeed in delaying the inevitable. We'll stop you again. Maybe. I pose you this question. What is it worth to you, stopping me? You've already got a collection of dead voices in your head. How many more is too many? How many of your friends will you let die before you give up? Which one next? No answer? Shall I choose then? How about the widow? She's already lost her husband. Maybe she'd be willing to sacrifice herself for the greater good. Or the lawman. He would argue that it's his duty and honor to die protecting the weak. Or the girl rushing to the hospital to be with her loved one. Shall we go and kill her off next? Or... Robert. Yes, that's the one. The nobody, the nothing. He has no place in this conflict at all. A bystander until you dragged him into it. Do you think he's ready to die? Ready to lay down his life for your mad crusade? You leave them out of this. You brought them into this. Their deaths will be on your conscience. The harder they fight me, the harder I must defend myself. That is the way of your world, isn't it? I am, after all, just trying to find my place in your world. I will find a way to stop you. There is no way to stop me. You gave it your best effort, and your best wasn't enough. You've failed, Peter. There is no second chance, no round two, no glorious comeback. The only thing is for you to accept that you have lost and spare your friends, the few who are left from suffering the same fate as Cade. What then, I just give up? Sit down on this rock here and die? Acceptance, Peter. Accept me. Accept my power. Accept my control. Become my vessel. And your friends will be free to go. I don't believe you. Your friends don't interest me. They can't stop me. An annoyance at best. But it's an annoyance I do not wish to have. You give me your free will, and they will be but a memory for me. So all I have to do is, what, let you in, so to speak? And my friends, all of them, will stay safe? You have my word. I 
need an answer, Peter. Time is short. Fuck you. What was that? I said, fuck you. You insult. You cannot have free reign over me. You've given me everything I need to stop you. And if I can't, then they will. Nothing will. You need me. You need my consent. You need me to give up my free will so that you can run rampant. But that will never happen. I will fight you every step of the way. I will keep you weak and make it impossible for you to get anything done. Oh, Peter. I never said I needed your consent. It just makes things easier. <laughs> get away from me. Goodbye, Peter. Peter? No. Peter is gone. Will he be back? No. Tunnels is a Haunted Griffin Entertainment production. It was written by Robert Chauncey and Charlie Dukes. It stars... Caitlin Buckley as Erica Young. Robert Chauncey as Robert Chauncey. Shannon Chauncey as Molly Madison. Randy Cool as Cade. Charlie Dukes as Peter Davis. Sarah Golding as Karen Rogers. Jason D. Johnson, George Locke. Jamie Killen as Harper Darden. Pete Lutz as Ezekiel. Lorelai Martine as Tatum Locke. Rhiannon McAfee as Annabelle Cotton. Peter O'Malley as Detective Greg Bowman. Thoreau Smiley as Dr. Barton. Alistair Stewart as Jeremy Thorpe. And introducing... Trent Shumway, Ariman. Our theme music is The World Will Break by Dano Songs. Our outro music, Into the Dark, was written by Thoreau Smiley of Harmless Entertainment Network. If you like this, please give us a five-star rating wherever you rate and review podcasts at. Also, if you want to hear other stuff that Haunted Griffin Entertainment produces, like Haunted Hell House of Horror or Marigold's Ghost, as well as future projects like our upcoming spin-off of Marigold's Ghost, Whistlewood, and our new sci-fi series companion, you should follow us on Facebook and Twitter. On Facebook, we're Haunted Griffin Entertainment, and on Twitter, we can be found at both Tunnels Podcast and Haunted Griffin. You can also purchase merchandise from any of our shows at our Tee Public store, or if you really want to help us out, become a patron. All of this info and more can be found on our website at hauntedgriffin.com. And speaking of our patrons, we would like to sincerely, sincerely, sincerely thank the following people who have supported us on our Patreon. Tim Tweed, Tatum Adams, Kristen Jeter, Jenna Ledham, Tim Lowe, Megan Griffin, Darren Bajent, and some note. This episode's audio drama spotlight shines on Midnight Burger. Hey Zebulon, could we get some, uh, you know, explaining what the hell is going on music? Once upon a time, Gloria got a job. I'm here for the job interview. The what? At a lonely diner outside of Phoenix called, uh, This is Midnight Burger. I'm Casper. I'm Ava. That's my booth over there. You're a regular here? <laughs> sure. Turns out the diner is a time-traveling dimension-spanning diner that shows up at a new place and time every day somewhere out there in the multiverse. You know. Gloria? Yes? Just remember that I told you to leave. It'll be fine. Also, the old-timey radio on the counter has a tendency to talk back to you. Pardon me, Gloria. Might my husband and I have a word? The radio is talking to me. And occasionally things try to kill them. Holy shit. Really, big monster? Zero irony. Despite all that, Gloria decided to stay. You should stay. Stay? Sure. You're looking for a job, right? The cook's an interesting guy. You wander around the universe? I mean, universe is a little reductive. There's even dating prospects. I know I 
with robots. I would like to ask you about your job and your life in general in a non-humorous way while gauging whether or not if you would like to commit crimes. Then there was that time she was a wolf queen. My friends are here. Ow! So it's an interesting gig, but still, the question lingers. Why this place? Why here? Why now? No matter where this place sets down from day to day, when I open the doors to start the day's business, someone is going to need us. Because how could they not? At the nexus of all things, there is a diner. Midnight Burger. And if time and tide roil you too harshly, or diurnal courses leave you with no safe havens, just remember, we're out there somewhere looking for you. We open at six. Look for Midnight Burger on your favorite podcasting app, or just go to weopenat6.com. What do you wish of me now? Ezekiel, my most loyal servant, you have done so well above even my expectations. And for that, you have my thanks and will be rewarded when this all comes to pass. But we have too many loose threads at the moment. We need to cut them off. My brother and the false prophet's sister are still in the tunnels. And how are they? Barnabas was hit in the leg with a sledgehammer. He's hurt. The leg is possibly broken. He'll be slow. May was stabbed, but she lives as well. Should I finish the job? No. I am gaining my strength back, and it will take time for me to reach my full power. We need allies. And the rakes? Without Cinder to control them, without the wards in place, it's just a matter of time before they come back. They are merely vermin, holdovers from a forgotten place and lost time. They don't concern me. With the wards no longer in place, they might finally move away from this cursed land, and we will be done with them once and for all. Now, go and make our offers to the two down below. And what will you be doing? Oh, I think I'm going to go for a little walk.